This is a practice exercise for page 345 in the textbook dealing with determining if molecules are polar or nonpolar. This is going to be a really important point when we talk about intermolecular forces in a couple of chapters, so it's extremely important that you're able to determine if molecules are polar or nonpolar. The best way to do this is to actually draw out the Lewis structures, take a look at the electronegativity values, draw in those dipole arrows in order to figure out which direction the electrons would be moving toward in the bond, and then determine if those dipole arrows cancel, so thinking about them like vectors in three dimensions. So let's go ahead and start by doing the first one. So we've got NF3. Just like we always do, we're going to try to figure out how many valence electrons we have to work with. So we know that nitrogen is bringing us five valence electrons. We know that we've got three fluorines each bringing us seven, so we've got a total of 26 valence electrons to work with. So again, when we draw these, we're going to assume that the first atom is the central atom unless we're told otherwise. So we're going to draw the nitrogen. We're going to do three bonds to fluorine. That's cost us six electrons, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Since I've got two more, those are going to go on the central atom. Checking our octet, fluorine has two, four, six, eight. That's good. Since all the other fluorines are bonded in the same way, they will also all have their octets. Checking nitrogen, two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen also has its octet. So then what we want to do is we want to think about what the shape actually looks like in three dimensions. Just because I drew it like it's T-shaped doesn't mean it actually is. So again, when we figure out the shapes or the geometries of these, we want to take a look at the central atom. So nitrogen is our central atom. We should see that it's got one, two, three, four electron domains. If it's got four electron domains, that means it's got a tetrahedral electron domain geometry. But since we've got three of them that are bonding and one of them that is non-bonding, if you look at the chart, this is actually going to be a trigonal pyramid molecule. Which means I should really redraw this to reflect that geometry. So since it's trigonal pyramidal and it comes from tetrahedral, that means that these should really be pointing at the four corners of a tetrahedron, so it looks more like that, with the lone pair occupying the fourth location on the top. So once I have an accurate picture of the geometry of this molecule, then what I want to think about is where are the electrons in the bond? So do I have nonpolar bonds or do I have polar bonds? In order to determine that, we're going to take a look at the electronegativity chart here. We're going to find nitrogen, which has got an electronegativity value of 3, and fluorine, which has an electronegativity value of 4. That tells us that fluorine's more electronegative, so fluorine is pulling more of the electrons in this bond. So when we draw those dipole arrows, we're going to draw them pointed toward the fluorine. Remember that cross at the end signifies that that's the partial positive. So that means that all the electron density is toward the outside here, and then I've got a lack of electron density or partial positive on the nitrogen. And if I look at these three arrows, I can see that they are not going to cancel because I don't have that fourth one pointing in the up direction that I would if this had all four bonds. So really I can think of these two as canceling, and I'm left with this arrow in the downward direction. So I'm going to have an overall dipole, for this molecule in the downward direction, and that means that it is going to be a polar molecule because I have an overall dipole. So again, these are individual bond dipoles. When I think about them as vectors in three dimensions, I can see that these two cancel, these really don't, so I'm left with this overall dipole in the downward direction, and an overall dipole means that I've got this overall unequal distribution of electrons, and that's what makes the molecule polar. So I can see that most of the electron density is going to be on the outside, but it's not going to be equally distributed because I'm missing that polar bond up top. Okay, let's do the next one, BCl3. I'm going to do the same thing in terms of drawing the Lewis structure. So I know that boron is going to bring three valence electrons, I know that each chlorine is going to bring seven electrons. That's going to give me a total of 24 electrons to work with. Same idea. I'm going to assume boron is the central atom. I've used six there. So in this case, I've used all 24 electrons. I should be able to see that I have an octet on all of the chlorines because they've got two, four, six, eight electrons surrounding them. 
Now, boron does not have an octet. It's only got six electrons surrounding it. But because of where boron is in the periodic table, that's fine. Boron does not need a complete octet. So again, we want to think about our electron domains. Again, following that central atom, there are only three electron domains on the central atom, which means I'm looking at trigonal planar. And since all three of them are bonding domains, I don't have any non-bonding, I have no lone pairs on that central atom, that means that my electron domain geometry is going to be the same as my molecular geometry. So this is also a trigonal planar molecule. And it's going to be a good idea for me to redraw that so you can really see that it's trigonal planar. So you should remember that a trigonal planar molecule means that I've got 120 degree bond angles. So I'm going to redraw this to make it more obvious what the bond angles are. And I really recommend that you do that when you're trying to determine polarity of molecules, is that you first draw the Lewis structure just to get it down on paper. And then if your Lewis structure really doesn't match the correct geometry, you redraw it. So now it's more obvious that I've got this structure here. Again, I'm going to check my electronegativities. So for boron, I've got 2.0. For chlorine, I've got 3.0. So there's a difference in electronegativity. I do have polar bonds. Again, I'm going to draw those dipole arrows pointing toward the more electronegative element, which in this case is chlorine. And remember that this is trigonal planar. So this is flat. Unlike this, which is not flat, this is a pyramid. My trigonal planar is flat. And you should be able to see that those three bonds pointing in the three equal and opposite directions will cancel. So since these bonds will cancel, the polarity vectors will cancel, that means that there's no overall dipole. The electron density is toward the outside of this molecule, but it's equally distributed toward the outside, again, because in the three-dimensional space of this molecule, those dipole arrows are canceling. I know it's a little hard to see in two dimensions when we draw it out, so I really encourage you to take a look at the pictures in your textbook and really think about what the three-dimensional shapes or the geometries look like. But since these are going to cancel, that means that overall I'm going to have a nonpolar molecule and there's no overall dipole for me to draw. So again, when you do these problems, there are a few steps you need to go through. The first thing you want to do is what we always do, count up your valence electrons, use that to draw a Lewis structure. Think about the geometry of your Lewis structure and redraw your Lewis structure to more accurately reflect that geometry. Then check your electronegativity values, determine if you have any bond dipoles, and then figure out if those bond dipoles will cancel in three-dimensional space. And if those bond dipoles do cancel, you've got a nonpolar molecule. If those bond dipoles do not cancel, you should be able to draw an overall dipole, meaning that you've got a polar molecule. If you get into a situation where you're checking your electronegativity values and you have two elements that have the same electronegativity value, so if, for example, you were doing a bond between carbon and sulfur, since those have the same electronegativity values, you would not draw any bond dipoles at all. There's no difference in electronegativities, so you must have a nonpolar molecule.